artists and welcome back to art class. This next project is going to be another two week project so you'll have a decent amount of time to work on it and we are going to be talking and learning about the artist Keith Haring. Uh, Keith Haring was a, he actually started off as a street artist. He used to go down into the subways in New York City and he used to have these um, like areas where they would have um, advertisements up on the wall and in between changing the advertisements they would just put up a piece of black paper and what Keith Haring would do is he would go down into the subways with a piece of chalk and he would draw these really funky looking kind of bubble head cartoon characters. These are some examples of his artwork if we hold them up. You can see a lot of them are kind of like, they're not quite stick figures because they are still three-dimensional, but they're very cartoonish with lots of hearts, different symbols. Sometimes we had animals like um, dolphins, uh, some with like polka dots. Some of his characters had like multiple eyes if they had details on them. He was well known for the crawling baby um, and especially these dogs. He's got dogs jumping through a person, UFOs, lots of crazy, really cool um, symbols and things that he would use in his artwork. And his artwork was also really, really colorful too, had a lot of bright colors. So if you look up his artwork, you can see a ton of different examples. He's also very well known for this one down in the corner, even though this is a black and white copy, um, figures of like people dancing with like their hands and like feet and arms and everything all in different positions. So we are going to be creating some Keith Haring figures. Uh, one of the cool things about Keith Haring too is when he started out as an as an artist, he actually wasn't really really famous. Um, there are a lot of artists that either like you know had a lot of money or they don't really become famous until after they're already gone. But what Keith Haring would do, um, this isn't one of his buttons. This is actually a button that a student made for me. But he would make little buttons that you could clip onto, you know, like wear. And that had little bits of his artwork. So if people saw him drawing in the subway and they said that like, you know, they stopped and watched him and said that they liked it, he would simply give them a button with a piece of his artwork on it. And it was kind of like his own way of advertising. They didn't have social media back then. So um, it's not like he could go on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and share his artwork with the world. So he had to think of different ways to kind of advertise himself. And he would do that through the buttons and leaving this artwork in the subways. And the thing about the artwork in the subways to remember too, is that because he was doing it on these panels where these advertisements were, literally he could make the artwork, it could be there for maybe two or three days, and then it would be gone because a whole new um, advertisement would be put up, like a new flyer would be put up or something in the subway tunnel. So it was very temporary. A lot of his artwork wasn't permanent. He also did a lot of graffiti or street art um, on walls in different areas of the city. That was a little more permanent unless it eventually got painted over. And he was also very famous uh, for doing one of his murals on the Berlin Wall, which was a very big piece of history in Germany. It was a very important piece of history that you're going to learn about later on. And um, he created a mural that was on the Berlin Wall, which it did eventually get destroyed when the Berlin Wall got taken down. So those are some cool facts about Keith Haring. And I am going to share with you a sheet and we're going to work together to make a couple Keith Haring figures. So let's take a look. Okay, so to make your Keith Haring figure, you are going to utilize this sheet that I have attached a photo of in the assignment and I will also share it with you on Teams. And this is kind of a dice rolling game, it's called Roll a Herring. Now if you don't have dice at home, that's totally fine, you don't need dice to play it. Turns out I don't even have dice at home, so I'm going to use this sheet to help me create my Keith Haring figures. If you did have dice, the way that you would play this game is you would only need one, and you have all the different numbers that you would find on a die, uh, one through six here on the side. And then you have all these different categories of your Keith Haring photo. So a head, arms, legs, symbols, lines to add, and special items that you can add to your picture. I am going to ask that you create four Keith Haring figures, just like what you see here. Now I took a long piece of paper, I folded it in half, folded it in half again to give myself four boxes, and I created one figure inside each box. I know that you don't all have super long paper at home. You can also create boxes with just a regular piece of paper. 
by folding it in half, like so. And then after folding your paper in half, by creating like this book, fold it in half the other way so that when you unfold it, just like I'm about to do, when you unfold it on a regular piece of paper, you can have one, two, three, four boxes, and you can do one figure in each of these boxes. So there you go. So you're going to fold your paper to create your spaces, and you're going to be making four figures. I'm going to show you how to make one, and then the rest is going to be up to you. So using my roll a herring piece, you're either using die if you want to kind of just make it random, or you can look at the paper and choose what you like. So for example, I need to start off with a head for my figure. Now if I had a dice, I could roll it. If it landed on a three, for example, then this is the head that I would draw for my figure. If it landed on a two, I would be drawing the dog head for my figure. So whatever number you roll, you find that number and move across to the category that you're currently working on, and that's what you draw. It's kind of a way so that you don't really have to think about what you're drawing, but if you see something that you really like, you can go ahead and draw that. So I'm going to make my figure with the, the head with a hole in the head. So I'm going to draw my head, the neck, and the hole in the head, just like I see on my figure. So that is my head. So now my next category is I need arms. Now there's no category for a body because for Keith Haring bodies, you're just going to add two lines after you do the arms. So looking at all of these different arms, um, I'm a pretty big fan of, I kind of like, I'm going to do the hands on the hips. And do the hands on the hips arms. So I need shoulders. And then when you do hands on and hips, you have your elbows kind of sticking out to the side. So I'm going to add two lines just to make my body really simple. And then from there, I can make my hands on my hips. I remember the Keith Haring cartoon figures, they're very cartoonish. So there's no fingers, like no like major details. They're just very round. So there's my head. Um, I added my body, my legs. Um, I'm going to do kind of like one of these walking legs. I think I'm going to do the ones going to the left here. So I'm going to do the ones here underneath number five. So if I look at that, one leg is kind of like out to the side like this. It's flat. And then there's kind of like a bent knee. So it kind of looks like he's doing like a funky little dance move. All right, so that's my head, my arms, and my legs. So I have most of my body done. Now for symbols, you could do one of these symbols either on your figure or it could be outside of your figure. You can see some of the ones that I have here um, when I chose the symbols. For example, this one, I just put the heart next to it. Uh, I have the money symbol here, uh, the cross, the X. Uh, things like that. You could just put them actually on your figure or you could put them near it. I am going to actually take a heart, but I'm going to put the heart on my figure this time. All right. Now lines to add. These are kind of cool things that you can add to your figures. Uh, these little dashed lines here can be used to fill in certain areas. I didn't use them anywhere here. So I'm actually going to put them here so you can see what they might look like. So they're just little, they're just little dashed lines and you can use those to fill different areas. You don't have to fill the whole shape though. So maybe I want to fill part of the head and it kind of creates like a texture. So I could do this, you know, just in part of my head. Maybe I even want to make half my head filled in with that cool texture. All right. Um, these little lines here, these two little wiggly lines here are kind of like make it look like your cartoon character is moving. So I use them on this guy up here. Kind of looks like even though he's sitting there with his arms together, it looks like he's moving because I put these two lines right here. So those are kind of movement lines. Uh, for this one, it, you can do lines that go around the head. I did those around my dog head. It almost actually makes it seem like they're yelling or creating some sort of loud noise. So almost like noise lines. You also have zigzag lines that you can use. I don't think I use those here, so I'm gonna use them on my figure here. I could do 
some funky zigzag lines around my character. You got the upside down eyeball. You could put that on your figure or you could put that next to it. And then you also have kind of like these castle lines. They almost look like little spikes. I put them on the side of my figure right here. So those are some examples of how you can use the lines to add. Your last category are special items. You have the dog, the UFO, a staff, or like a stick. I don't think I used the staff on any of these characters, but like I could have drawn, you know what, I'm gonna add it. I could have drawn my dog holding a staff. Now he's holding a staff, kind of like Gandalf, you shall not pass. All right, you could do a hole in the torso. You can see I did that on a couple of my figures here. My figure here already has a hole in the head, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. I don't wanna have too many holes in my figures. And then you also have a TV and a camera. So these are other fun little items that you could put that maybe your character is holding or that's in the background, surrounding. I did the dog actually going between these two panels here, so it kind of ties them all together. And then once you're all done, you are going to color. Now, I would draw them in pencil. And then if you have a black marker or a Sharpie marker, take that and outline everything that you've drawn and then you can color them in. To color them in, you can use whatever you want. Marker, color pencil, crayon, a combination of all of those things. Whatever you have at home to color with, I want you to do that. So your assignment, you will have two weeks to work on this. You are doing four figures and you can use the roll a herring sheet to help you out. I will post a photo of this so you can look at it. If you have dice at home, you could use the dice to help you kind of roll and play the game or you could just look at the sheet and pick what you like. Also, what kind of might be fun is if you close your eyes, take your finger, and just like point at something random and draw that, okay, once you create your figure. So have fun with it, uh, be creative, and I can't wait to see your Keith Herring figures that you come up with. And I will see you guys again next time. Bye.